All right, welcome everybody. So we're now uh, back and uh, we are, we're now going to do the final chapter of business statistics uh, and uh, state 1000 or state 1001. And um, basically we're now going to look at the final um, uh, test, uh, which is what we call the chi-square test. So um, it's also part of um, uh, the hypothesis test, but um, it's, it's, it's a special hypothesis test and, and you'll see how special that is uh, very soon, okay. So if you think about it in chapter six, we looked at testing hypothesis for a single population um, mean and the difference between population means and for a single proportion. We did all that in chapter, uh, chapter six. But uh, the point is in all these tests, the pro population pro parameters uh, were numerical summary measures, okay? So they were numerical, all right? They were numerical summary measures, namely um, a mean or a proportion uh, and things like that. And our objective uh, was to test statements about these parameters using sample information. That's exactly what we did in chapter six. So uh, these particular problem statements require original observed data to be numerical. This is the whole point, okay? So in chapter six, we're dealing with, uh, in chapter six, we're dealing with numerical uh, numerical uh, parameters and things like that, all right? Um, um, uh, 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 and of course, we're saying um, um, our, our original observed data was numerical in a, in a way. So, uh, so, so we could calculate averages, et cetera, and of course, proportions for categorical variables as well. Uh, uh, the proportion we're dealing with, maybe the proportion of people uh, using a certain product, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But now we're saying when using uh, or analyzing uh, data, we're often interested in investigating, of course, uh, to uh, the relationship between uh, two variables or how var both variables be behave together. And we call that bivariate analysis, okay? So when both variables are numerical, we are now back in chapter two, right? That's chapter two, where we talked about um, descriptive uh, regression. Okay, you guys should remember this, right? Talked about descriptive regression in chapter two. Chapter two. All right. However, if both variables are categorical, oh my, there's something beautiful coming up here. So if both variables are categorical, we have not covered that. So we can't talk about correlation or core, uh, and regression because remember for correlation and regression, we we want we 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 would put those numerical values in the calculator for x and for y, and would put all these values in the calculator, etc. But now if the uh, if you remember what in chapter one, what is an example of a, of a categorical variable? So like um, things like, uh, you know, the size, uh, maybe of a t-shirt someone wears is some kind of categorical. It could be small, uh, medium, large, and things like that. And, um, uh, you, you know, you, you know uh, if, uh, variables that can be classified into categories, uh, whose levels can be classified into categories. That is what we're talking about when we're talking about categorical variables. So to assess the relationship between uh, categorical variables, maybe gender and, um, um, and color preference and things like that, okay? So color could also be seen as categorical and gender could be seen as categorical. Such examples are categorical variables. And we're saying for such front variables, uh, um, um, of course, things like gender and marital status um, um, or even numerical values that the variables that have been categorized, such as person's age categorized into age categories, etc. We might want to find the relationship between categorical variables. And that's where the chi-square comes in. So I think to address this particular problem statement, we will use the chi-square test of independence, which is noted by I. Uh, Chi square. So it's, it's chi, not chai. Chi, chi square. Chi square test. All right. All right. So um, this is a hypothesis test used to determine if two categorical variables are dependent or related or associated. So, particularly, we're talking about uh, the dependence of um, categorical variables. For example, we may wish to test whether there is an association between income level and brand preference, okay? So income level could be also in, a, in, categor in, in categories and brand preference could also be in categories. Uh, or if the size of uh, the washing machine uh, bought is, re is, is related to the size of the family, okay? Maybe the family could be in uh, terms of categories, small, uh, medium size and, and the large family, et cetera. And maybe the, 
the size of the washing machine is also into categories, all right? So the chi-square test is based on the table of observed counts from bivariate data. So we're going to have some kind of table of observed counts. And this table, we called it the contingency table when we talked about probability, which was nothing but an extension um, of the frequency table, okay? You were introduced to the frequency table in chapter one, and we extended the frequency table in chapter four, uh, in our chapter of probability, where we now talked about what we call the contingency table. You guys should remember the contingency table. If you don't remember, please go back to chapter four and try and see if you can recall what the contingency table is all about. It is a two-dimensional table where one variable is presented in rows and the other variable in columns. And you would see the interaction or interse in intersection of the, of the two variables, okay? So think about A and B, et cetera, and how they intersect. But in this case, we're talking about the counts, okay? The counts or the observed counts in particular, observed counts of some categor categorical variable, maybe so many female, so many males, so many, uh, you know, um, in categories. So basically that is what we're talking about. The row variable um, has R categories, okay? So you can see the R is there to denote the, uh, the row categories, okay? Uh, and the column has C uh, categories. So this is the column um, uh, categories, okay? All right, so both va uh, values of, of uh, so the values of both variables divide the table into R times C non-overlapping cells. Isn't that beautiful? We're saying we have R of these and we have um, C of the columns, okay? So all together, if you combine this, we're basically talking about something that looks like this, okay? If this is R and this is C, so we have R times C cells, okay? Um, R times C cells. And of course, we can see that the cells are non-overlapping. So our cells are non-overlapping, okay? Our cells are non-overlapping. All right, good, beautiful. This is what we're talking about. All right, so um, where are we? And each item in the sample will fall into one and only one of these cells. So each item is going to fall in only one item, in only one cell. We're not going to have an item falling in both cells uh, uh, because these cells are non-overlapping. All right, beautiful. All right, so analysis of, a, of, of the contingency table is based on the number of obser observations in the different categories rather than the mean or proportion. All right, so we'll be talking about uh, the number of observations in the different categories, and that is going to be used in, in the calculation or the analysis of, uh, um, of the number of this number of observations um, or the analysis of the contingency table, which is going to take us to uh, the chi-square test. Uh, and you see how beautiful this test is actually. So the chi-square chi test is a non-parametric or distribution-free in nature. So we're saying there is no assumption. There's no assumption beforehand on uh, um, uh, the population distribution. Okay, there's no assumption on the population distribution. You remember the test that we're doing like Z and T, et cetera. We, we had assumptions on, uh, on, on uh, a normal distribution and things like that. So here in this case, we're saying there's no such an assumption, okay? So it's an assumption-free, it's an assumption-free um, or distribution-free. Uh, we don't uh, assume any uh, 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 population distribution a priori or before the samples are drawn, uh, or that, you know, the samples are drawn from this population. We don't have that kind of assumption here. And that is what we call um, non-parametric tests, okay? It's non there, there's no assumption on the parameters. Uh, there's no parametric assumptions or, or the parametric um, distribution uh, uh, of the, of the, of, of, of from which the data is sampled. So they, they, there is not such an assumption. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, that's a beautiful thing. So we're basically uh, dealing with data here. We're, we're using the data we have to, uh, to see what is happening in the data. All right, so the test that we carried out in chapter six uh, made assumption about the samples, uh, that, that the assumption were, were drawn from specific distribution or assumed distribution. And most of the times it was the normal, um, normal distribution. If you guys, um, can go back. If you are, don't quite get this, please go back to the idea of the sampling um, sampling distribution. You see that there was always an assumption 
uh, around um, the population distribution. Um, um, that, that is what will take us to Z and things like that. All right. So such tests are referred to as parametric tests. So what are parametric tests? The tests we use in chapter six, you know, like the Z test, the T test, etc., cetera, um, et cetera. So the objectives of this chapter include, all right, identifying or identify the specific hypothesis test, identify the specific hypothesis test in terms of the uh, chi-square particularly here. And, and you need to know how to read the chi-square table. So we're going to have a chi-square table like we had the Z tables and we also had the T tables. You guys are gurus in this stuff already. So now we're going to introduce you guys to the chi-square uh, table. So it's, 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 it's going to be similar to the T table in that it will be an upper tail uh, uh, table, okay? It is going to have upper tails and it is also going to deal with degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom here are going to define in terms of the rows and the columns. And you see how beautiful that is, okay? Isn't that beautiful? So uh, perform the chi-square test uh, uh, or hypothesis test is also part of the objectives of this chapter. And of course, the last objective is to interpret the results, okay? That'll be the last, uh, last part of uh, the chi-square test of our source system. So what are we basically trying to do? We're trying to test association between um, categorical variables, okay? Categorical variables. What are categorical variables? Variables which are not numerical in nature. It could be numerical variables if you wish, but they have been put into categories, okay? But categorical variables is basically variable whose levels are in categories, all right? So you're talking about things like gender and color and things like that. Okay, the things that can be put into categories or even the size of something, but as long as it's into categories, which are non-overlapping and things like that. So we're talking about the relationship or the association of categorical variables, okay? So of course, there's going to be some chapter formula and you guys can, can have a look on the chapter formula um, uh, at the end of the notes. And um, 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 uh, I will make a separate video on the steps in hypothesis. Test. So the steps that are involved in the chi-square test of association, I'll make a separate video on that. All right, thank you.